Hey friends, great to see you again and welcome back to episode two of the Eurovision 30 Day Challenge with Jordan and Shane. Welcome back to this mini series of 30 Day Challenge with me and Jordan. So hopefully you checked out episode one, if not it is linked above. Um, so today we're going to be covering days 11 to 20, so enjoy. I need to start with this one. Best female vocal, Shane, what do you have? Ah, okay, best female vocal. Oh, okay, so I've got... Okay. <laughs> right. Um, okay, I'm going to base this on the preview shows, right? Okay. And there's two... I, I, I'm going to cop out. I, I, I couldn't pick between two people, so I'm going to say two people. Um, first one um, being Armenia. Um, I just think I can't I can't fault her in her live performances sure. genuinely and I'm gonna give a bit of credit to a song which people have rightfully said what's your issue with the song um, and and I'm glad people have said that to me because I've now been like what is my issue with that song I'm gonna say Andrea from North Macedonia like mm. I've been watching like the the live performances she's done. Yeah. Vocally strong. Like uh -huh. we we do not have in to the best of my knowledge a female vocal powerhouse this year. Unless you're going to say one I'm gonna be like oh sugar yeah. We don't. We don't we don't have a Celine. We don't we we, we don't have any of those. Mm -hmm. Um in fact I, I was watch I was at a bar in Grand Canary yesterday and and you forget like do you remember um, Zlata from Ukraine, oh, 2013? Yeah. We, yeah. we don't have any of those this year, female-wise. Right. Right. Males, we're, we've got abundance of male Maybe vocal too many. singers. Mm -hmm. Too many, but not female. <laughs> too many? That's not even English, Shane. <laughs> too many. <laughs> but like, if, if I'm thinking about female vocals, now hearing them live consistently, uh -huh. Rosalyn... Andrea from North Macedonia. Both, mm. every time I've heard them, can't fault them. You go. Okay. I'll agree with North Macedonia. Absolutely. Ooh. Like, big fan of her. I've always liked this song. Um, so okay. she wasn't my choice, but she was definitely in with the ones I was thinking about. But I have to say, in terms of consistency um, and in terms of standing out um, vocally, during the pre-shows, I'll say Emma from uh, Malta. Yes, that was my, that was vocal. that was the other person that I was going to say. Yeah, I mean it elevates the song so much within the realm of you know what the song can do. Obviously, it has its limits. It's a you know right <laughs> the song you know it has its limits in terms of you know it's this kind of pre-formulated sounding happy song. Like that's fine. I like that kind of a thing, but. This vocal elevated it to, I think, probably, you know, the peak of what the song can be able to do vocally. Um, and so she's been super consistent with the vocal, especially when a lot of people have had a lot of troubles um, at the pre-shows. Like, she's been pretty solid the whole time. And so I've been nothing but impressed with her performance and her live vocal. And so I definitely think she's one of the best female vocalists that we have this year and certainly one of the most consistent. So is Emma your number one? Best female vocal? I'm going to go with yes. I'm going to go with hmm. yes. With I'm others happy with in that. contention. <laughs> <laughs> right. I've noticed you've been showing your knees a lot more in your videos. Getting a little risque, aren't we? <laughs> I did say that. I said, I've seen Shane's knees a lot more recently. <laughs> a bit of blue. A bit of blue for the <laughs> We but are editing this out. <laughs> people like it. No. Okay. Fine <laughs> enough. But like, you know they appreciate it. Well. They it, it, it's, it's not a conscious choice. It's more of a kind of like a chilled, <laughs> relaxed vibe. It's <laughs> right. more of a chilled, relaxed vibe. Day 12. A country that surprised you. Jordan. For me, this was mm -hmm. pretty solidly Austria. Um, I talked about this in episode one of Eurovision T, but like Austria has been like behind the ball for the past few years, in my opinion. And so to all of a sudden get this really contemporary um, 
kind of clubby dance song. Like, I'm very happy and I was shocked. I didn't think this is what we would get. Um, I did like, you know, what Austria was doing back in 2019, Panda. That was good. But this is... This is do you like just, Panda? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I didn't love it live, but since 2019 ended, and this is usually the way shit goes for me, but like, once the year ends... I usually appreciate all of the songs a hell of a lot more because you can kind of relive the emotions of that year's contest mm -hmm. by listening to the songs again. So even though I didn't love it live, like now that I listen to it, it takes me right back to like watching, you know, the 2019 show in New York. Like it just gets you back into that headspace. So yeah, I really did like 2019. Um, but yeah, so Austria was a huge surprise for me just because I didn't expect this to come from them after what they've done the past couple of years. It's fair. Um, I was hoping Austria would come back with a bang because obviously they've been slightly sleeping for a while. Although, despite the fact they delivered Panda. <laughs> Look, uh, so, this is not going to be a Panda <laughs> bathing session. <laughs> um, in all seriousness, um, my biggest surprise, and it's I was I was thinking about this one for quite a long time actually, and I think it's because for me it's Serbia Constructor. Mm. I got on that plane to Serbia. Constructor was my I I wasn't sleeping on Constructor at all. I think it was like my fourth or fifth favorite. Uh -huh. My YouTube channel can testify to it. I ranked them all, and I arrived in that country. Um, oh no, Shane, you arrived after the country after the semi final, and there was starting to be a ripple effect. At the end of the day, nonetheless. I remember going into the the live final or whatever, and it was it was Sarah Jo, um, Sarah Yo. That's how you pronounce it, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Sarah Yo. Um, uh, it was hers to lose, as far as I was aware. And there was Zoe, Zoya, Zoya, Zoria, Zoya. Perfect. <laughs> um, uh, but I remember um, halfway through speaking to the. I, can't, I have to be very careful what I say because I want to be invited next year. Um, certain people who allowed me to be there, uh -huh. I looked at them being like, who do you think is going to win or who do you want to win? And they were like, constructor. Mm -hmm. And like when, so I was in the press room and every song was being performed. And don't get me wrong, sorry, yo, everyone was crazy. But when constructor came on, I looked around the room. And I was like, I think this is going to win. And like, no, like, Literally, no one saw it coming outside uh -huh. outside of Serbia. Right. Outside of Serbia, and so obviously, when it wins, there's this ripple effect, and then comes out being like, it's that kind of Eurovision fan thing, being like, oh, another country picked a rubbish song. I'm so annoyed, and I was like, oh no, this is actually quite a good song. And when I was in Madrid watching, um, she unfortunately, I think she had COVID. I couldn't work out why she wasn't there, but she mm -hmm. was in bed or whatever. Uh -huh. And the whole audience, I think Sario would have been amazing on the preview shows or whatever. Um, but for me, this is a really long-winded answer. I'm so sorry. The biggest surprise, Constructor, because after all the initial listens, uh -huh. I did not think Serbia would pick it. Right. Okay. I see it with the justification. After you explained it, I understand. Well, at length. <laughs> right. <laughs> How could you not understand that? <laughs> okay. Um, I hope you start with this one. Day 13, a country that disappointed you. I'm going? Yeah. Okay. So this one, and it's sad to see because I really loved what they send. I, I love what they send most years. But unfortunately, it's Azerbaijan. Um, not a big fan of Fade to Black. Not a big fan of Fade to Black. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not bad. It just doesn't stand out. There are like three men's songs that it takes me like 30 seconds to figure out which one is playing when it comes on if I'm not like looking at it. Um, and this is one of them. Um, I cannot, for the life of me, like, decipher this from, like... Well, I won't say the other ones. I'm not going to dig myself into an unnecessary hole. Um, but <laughs> it just you've, doesn't... You've already, a, you've already dug a pretty big one. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, oh, freaking well. Look, <laughs> I loved... Um, I loved Matahari last year. Like, that was a 
great song. I like that more than Cleopatra, actually. Um, and I love what they send most years. And so, look, I get to have an off year. I get to have an off year. I even loved, remember I Sell back in 2018? I love Cross I My cross Heart. I Cross My Heart. Tear down the feet. Oh, my God. That's such a good song. So, uh, Could I put a pin on um, my most favorite non-qualifier? Mm, sure. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so this year it would be Azerbaijan for me. Your okay. turn. Um, oh, gosh. Right, on a serious note, can I just say, number one, Jordan, like, this kind of Eurovision YouTube world, there's a lot of kind of people, it, it's just full of reaction videos, right? Right. And as a result of that, like, I've, I've fallen victim to that. Like, I really loved Grease's song. And then, obviously, when I did my top 40, that all came back in my face. That's right. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but, no, yeah. Um, but can I just say, like, thank you so much for being so candid. Because, on a serious note, I'm similar to you. Like, I I, I like what Azerbaijan brings. Like, I right. loved, like, Matahari. It's, like, one of my most played songs on Spotify. Totally. Like, these things aren't personal. Right. At the end of the day. They're not personal. Exactly. I, I just don't think this song is very good. Um, and it was a toss-up between the one that you've just said, um, but I was a bit, probably a bit too scared to say it, but you've said it, and hence why I want to say... Congratulations, sure, thank you very sure. much for being candid. Um, I copped well, out with... Bul- you I, 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 went, I, went, I went Bulgaria. <laughs> okay, listen, I'm not going to fault you. You've been through a lot this season. Like, <laughs> I went take, Bulgaria. Take that one. Uh-huh. Yeah, but no, but I, I just want to kind of, like, just sympathise with what you just said with Azerbaijan. Sure. Like, it's just... The fact that we had to wait so long for it, and moreover, right. the fact that the guy is evidently so bloody talented. Like, in, right. in, Mad- in Madrid, he sang without an earpiece. Like, the dude mm. can sing. Right. And, Absolutely. like, and Azerbaijan has the money. They could have gone anywhere. Like, why that song? Right. Um, I, I, I think I've been a bit nervous to be like, it's rubbish. I'm not going to say it's rubbish. It's not. Well, exactly. When it gets- when Which it gets is... to that vinyl bridge, it's it's quite pleasant to listen to. But like right. by the time I get there, I'm done. Yeah. And I and I and I do I do put Azerbaijan in regards to like the songs that I'm looking forward to every year. And I remember on first listen being like, "This is unbelievably disappointing." Yeah, and it sucks to say. But the reason we're saying that is because we want to stand so- country songs. Like, we want every country to send, you know, the best song that it can. And we yeah. want to love all of them. So, you know, when a country maybe falls short, then, you know, you have to you have to recognize that and hope for better next year. Or hope that they can at least do something interesting with it on stage this year, even if the song itself is not stand out. But, I, two things. Number one, Azerbaijan... You had foresight. Like, you knew what semi-final you were in. You knew it was full of male powerhouse, like, ballads. So you knew what the kind of criteria was. You you have an advantage if you release it right near the end. But number two, never rule out Azerbaijan, because I slept on Chingiz. I thought that mm. song was rubbish. Not rubbish, but I, I was sleeping on it. And then I saw it live, and I was like, oh, yeah, it's actually quite good. Yeah, but that song, I don't know. <laughs> Even the song itself had more to it than this. Like, this is just really super... I'll call it super standard. Like, it's uh-huh. just super standard. Chinga's song, even if you didn't like the song, like, it was something different. Like, it stood out. It had some of the characteristically Azari instrumentation. Like, there was something in it more than just, like, a standard male ballad. Yeah. You know that's true, that's true. But maybe yeah. he can do something vocally that departs from the studio track. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I think like if that song's in a qualifier, it'll be based on his vocals. But I mean, again, I think Christian's song is better and his vocals is better. I think Sheldon's. I, 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 see, I've not got the musical talent to be like whose vocals is better, but I think Sheldon and Poland have a better song. I, I think they do. 
Um, that's my opinion. Um, okay, so I said Bulgaria because it was an easy choice. It was low hanging fruit, but I think because sure. Bulgaria has become a ha- like it's become a powerhouse, and and they right. were the first to release. If you're going to be the first to release your song, like get us excited, right? Right. Yeah, it was a strange they- start to the season. Mm-hmm. Very strange start to the season. Right. Okay. Number fourteen. Fave band or duo? Is this me? Or you? Oh, you started last time. No, I'll go. Uh, I've got two people here, so come on, Shane. Um, okay, okay, I'm gonna go Italy. I'm gonna go Italy. Okay. Um, so I obviously live in Italy, and oh man, San Remo goes on super freaking late. Mm-hmm. Goes on to like two or three in the morning. So I was watching it with my friends, and then I walked home, and it was like still half two in the morning, and still the results hadn't come through. Um, I just want to say, Mahmood and Blanco. Like, I know the song is an LGBTQ moment, even though Mahmood identifies with that community. Um, but living in Italy, and trust me, despite the fact that it's a Western country, mm-hmm. it's not Western when it comes to LGBTQI plus things. Mm. Um, and obviously after Maniskin, right. like, it's that continuation. It means a lot. Yeah. Like, it, for me, being in that country, it means a lot. And... In all seriousness, that that song, uh, that was going to be my uh, kind of nomination for overrated because that first thirty mm. seconds, like when that first thirty seconds comes on, I'm like doing stuff. But when it gets into that chorus, I'm like, oh yeah, it's quite good. But uh-huh. then when I watch it live, uh-huh. their chemistry together, their what? chemistry together wins. And I do think they could do the double because of them yeah. and their chemistry. So for me, Italy, yeah. Jordan. That was a really thoughtful answer. I appreciated that, that response <laughs> very much. Um, mine is a little more silly. Okay. <laughs> it's Subwoofer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, not at all, not at all. I did, who freaking knew going into this season that I would fall in love with two space wolves? Like, literally, I would go on a date <laughs> with them. Like, <laughs> I don't know. It's just... Which like one? I, Keith or what's the second one? Jim. Jim Keith or or Jim? Both of them or? I don't know. I can't choose. (laughs) Maybe both. Um, (laughs) But like I mentioned, episode one of Eurovision T, it's just the world that they've created with these characters and the fact that they so thoroughly embody (laughs) the story that they're telling and they never break and even when oh my god when his glasses flew off during the performance and he still kept going with the little i don't know you know even that didn't didn't make him break character you know like it's just so infectious the fun that they have and just exploring the world as if it's from their eyes and I don't know I love them I love what they're doing and so Subwoofer will be my favorite duo band well I, I'm gonna throw back the compliments I love the justification there that was very 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 well thought out yeah thank you <laughs> I think we're doing pretty good <laughs> <laughs> right well the next one I've got I've, okay I've got a I, I think I know what my answer is going to be. I've got a gap, though. Number 15, song that makes you dance. Now, you go first. Okay, I'll just... It's pretty easy. I'll say it's Albania again. Like, every time this comes on, it just moves through my body, and I just... <laughs> oh, I just want to get down. Um, so, yeah, Albania, easily, song makes me dance. Of course, like, Spain, too. Obviously, that was another um, contender for me. And then there are a couple of others that make a little bit less sense perhaps but they didn't win so you'll never know (laughs) (laughs) so yeah spain um is an obvious choice for me it's obviously my favorite and um norway to be honest when it comes on Mm, i do want to get you going it does get me good yeah yeah (laughs) yeah, it it, it gives me a jig um but the last thank you very much (laughs) the last two days um I'm going to be honest with you, like, I'm a little bit obsessed with I love me, I love me, Romania. Oh. <laughs> I just can't sing, I just can't sing. Oh, for, 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 I'm just joking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
I'm a little bit obsessed okay. with it. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. And when it comes on, I just, I just, I just get just into my DNA. Kinda, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, just grooving. Uh huh. But but also, I'm not a dancer like you are, Jordan. So, I'm not a dancer like, either. But that, is that true though? Because I've seen your kind of yeah your videos, and I'm a viber. I'm a mover, but I wouldn't say a dancer. Well, hold on a minute, because it was the Vladina video where I saw there, there was a leg. Okay, but a, a high leg does not a dancer make. <laughs> <laughs> but it was higher than I could do my leg. Well, that's that's the that's the ballet, I think. But that still, you know, that you can't make a dance career out of a high leg. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, for me at the moment, Romania, I'm just I'm a bit obsessed. Look, um, I get... I'm with you. I love that he loves a wide leg pant too. <laughs> oh, I'm a stand right. those pants. That's right. Oh, guilty pleasure. There we go. Yeah. Who's going first? <laughs> I've forgotten now. Who's going first? Me. I'm going to go with you. It's you. Oh, is it me? It's you. Um, okay. Okay, so number 16, Guilty Pleasure. So, yeah, I guess it's my turn. Um, based on Eurova- Eurofan reactions and based on my reaction, the one that I'm just like, I love, but a little bit too, like, it's Malta. Like, I'm a little bit obsessed. Oh. Like, I know! Because, like, <laughs> like <laughs> don't get me wrong, not out of sight, that song was rubbish. Right. But, like... This song, literally, sure. I I think it was like number fourteen when I did my top forty. It's probably a little bit higher now, and that was a song where a lot of people, when they wanted to come for me, being like, "But you put Malta here," and I was like, "Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, I did, <laughs> yep. yeah." And and my taste is awful. I get that. I did say that at the beginning. I am the guy <laughs> that does love electro velvet, so deal with it. Oh sure, um, good for you, but. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you, Jordan. Um, yeah, so my guilty pleasure, knowing that people do not love the song and knowing that I love it, is Malta. Jordan, yours? My guilty pleasure, and I, looking at this, I actually don't think it's really a guilty pleasure. Well, maybe it is, I don't know. Um, is Georgia. Lock me in. I really like this. Something about it. I don't know. I couldn't tell you why. I could not tell you why I like this. I would. The only the only reason why I would question whether that's a guilty pleasure. If you said to someone, "I like Georgia," no one would question you. See, that's what I was saying. Yeah. So then I was I was rethinking it a bit, but I don't have another answer right now. So this is this is gonna be the one for me right now. Um, lock me in. I don't know. Just really love it. Gets this is one that that does make me dance too. I I do sleep on it a little bit, but when it does come on, I do think, oh no, it's actually not that bad. Mm-mm. It's very good actually. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, this is an interesting one. And uh, number 17, your favorite winner mm. of all time. Well, <laughs> um, okay. So obviously like Euphoria is there, but like, let's do something different. So I went with the following winner. Um, Emily, Emily DeForest, Only Teardrops. I freaking love that song. I love that live performance. I love the whole feed off flowy dress, drummer, and they, you, you remember that little cute moment in the live performance where he was doing the little flute, and then he was like... The, the, the really handsome guy? Yeah, and then he did that little smile, like, mm-hmm. Like, I don't know, just everything about the song, like, I could listen to this song on repeat for, like, 24 hours. I love this song. Okay. Do you know what mine is? Can I have a hint? It's the same as yours. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Emily DeForest! Emily DeForest! Like, it's been... Um, I think I did the the 30-day challenge last year. Uh-huh. And that was my answer then. And it's not changed now. Like, it, it at the end of the day, it, this category is based on the song that I listened to now. The one that's aged the best, right? Mm-hmm. And I will say, I, not like I'm trying to be on a Denmark train, but I do kind of like 
Fly on the wings of love. <laughs> um, that kind of was going to be my answer. But like, no, the one song that I listen to and the one that has aged the most is Emily DeForest. Mm. Yeah. Okay, okay, so, friend, look at us agreeing on something. I know, <laughs> I'm quite I'm quite surprised. Um, okay, so... Oh, I'm glad I don't have to go first on this one. Oh, sugar. No, I I haven't got an answer to this. Uh, I've got... No, I would... No, I have to go first, don't I? That's right. Favourite Eurovision non-qualifier. Oh, man. I had 13 songs. I properly, properly did a deep dive today. I was going to say, can we do like five to ten? <laughs> right. So the one so- The 13 songs that I had... Yeah, just was, run through them. Was Rebecca Dramelji, Ragnar Zame... 2008. Oh, yeah, good one. <laughs> um, number two, Feminine. Laco, oh. Laco, yes, ve. Look, good list um, so far. Thank you very much. Number three, Dana International. Ding dong, say no. Okay. No, we've stopped there. Okay. Um, number four, Slovenia, Eva Bota. Vision. Oh, God. I know. I'm yes. obsessed with I'm obsessed with that song. Number five, Valentina Minetta, Chrysalid. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's San Marino, right? Um, Israel, number six, Moran Mazar, Rak Bishivikalo. Freaking love that song. Number seven, Susie. Oh, oh, oh. Number eight, Czech Republic, Marta and Vaclav, Hope Never Dies. Absolutely obsessed mm. with that song. Mm-hmm. Number nine, Sir Hat, I Didn't Know. I'm going to be honest mm. with you. Freaking love that song. Oh, Number that- 10, Calliope, Donna. Donna, 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 no, I know it. Um, number 11, Estonia, Coet and Laura, Verona. Lost in Verona. Sure. Of course. Number 12, I cross my heart the, the, the firewalls I obviously wrong key. Um and number thirteen, IQ Lost and Found. Mm. But I'm gonna be honest with you, there were a few moments where my heart sunk when they didn't qualify. Mm-hmm. And that would be Oh sugar Shane. Right, just go for it. No, you know the answer. In all seriousness, there are some quality songs with what I've just said. But the song, because I had the t-shirt made because it was the first time, because I'd moved into a studio in London and I couldn't host a Eurovision party. So we were going out into London to a Eurovision party that was actually awful. And I had a t-shirt made. Um, it would be Estonia, Coet and Laura, Verona. Mm. Lost in Verona, that's my favourite non-qualifying song. Mm. Jord- Jordan. Okay, well... <laughs> There is some overlap. I forgot about some of the ones you mentioned, but I won't mention them again. But I do have a list. Um, so, one of this might be the favorite overall, but it may also not be. In Too Deep, Tiana from 2017. Don't make that face. No Tiana <laughs> slander will be had. Absolutely not. Um, another one, uh, Lubav Yesfuda. Serbia 2013, the three. Oh, um, nah, Mo- Moya three. Yes. Oh nah. my God, I love that song. You nah. are. That is rude. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sar- another- Sa- Sara Yo gets an extra mention there. Why? Because she was in that band. What? Sorry, you was in Moya 3. Are you kidding me? No, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> How did you? <laughs> Hold on. I'm Googling. Liz. Google it. Really? <laughs> <gasps> <laughs> oh my God. Who knew? <laughs> Well, <laughs> you hopefully. Wow, obviously not. <laughs> obviously not. Well, <laughs> the more you know. <laughs> um, well, I'm glad it was on the list. Um, <laughs> um, another one, uh, Yes Then. 
<laughs> Wait. Po- yeah, 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 yeah. Poland. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like tragic. Magdalena. Oh. Still breaks my heart. Oh my um, gosh, but hold on hold on a minute. That song, legendary. Um, all I will say is that was the year Dusseldorf, everyone was slagging off Dusseldorf in regards to the staging. Have mm. you seen that performance? Did you see I've seen one it of the, many a time. But did you see one of the backing vocalists fall and she yelps as she falls? No. Okay, well you need to rewatch that. What then. was it in the final or the semi final? Oh well, shit. They, she they didn't, didn't get to the final <laughs> <laughs> oh, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> uh, I need um, to watch. No, I've never seen that, and I've watched that performance like twenty times. Okay, well, someone it, it, she falls. Um, it, can I just say that song? Amazing, should have qualified, but honestly, Dusseldorf did her a disservice. The staging was awful, and also that was the when I was doing. Staging was great. <sighs> I love but, the choreography. No, no, the choreography was amazing. Don't get me wrong. I, I have an issue with Dusseldorf in general. Oh, like the stage itself? Yeah. yeah I yeah, see. Yeah. I see. Okay. Sorry. But that, that was a good one, by the way, because that was going to be in yeah. mine as well. Good. Um, another one you had, Rock Beach Below. Um, following up on that, same heart. Israel 20. I cross my heart. No. Uh, no. no. Same heart. Same heart. Oh, Israel I, 2014. We same heart. Yeah, Israel, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, fantastic. Uh, Portugal 2015, I can't remember the um, song's name, but look it up if you aren't sure. Um, and then one I've been listening to a lot, Utopian Land. <sighs> With a rise and a rise. <laughs> I love that song. <laughs> I have grooves to that song. I love that See, song. If this comes out before episode two of um, Eurovision Tea, there's two things that happened there. Number one, <laughs> me and Jordan went deep dive into Portugal's previous songs, to That's which I right. said I wasn't quite favourable of them. And Jordan was like, they've been rocking it year on, year out. Absolutely. And second of all, we talked about Utopian Land. And I said, <laughs> meh. And Jordan was like, this is my jam. <gasps> what? <laughs> I said that to, well this is no it's not so a uh, surprise right but yeah there are a lot more obviously but you know we we hone it down as we can <laughs> at the end of the day Jordan as Eurovision fans we like all the songs right oh exactly exactly and again that's the point we want to like all of them yeah yeah we, do, we have no prejudices um, okay, so day nineteen. Fav- okay, this is where it gets geographical, and this is where I had to properly Google, <laughs> like right kind of geographical Same. areas. Right. Yeah. Good. Don't right. want to look crazy. D- don't. Uh, yeah, and I don't want to look crazy either. Um, day nineteen. Favorite Nordic twenty twenty two entry. Um, I'll go first. So I'm gonna stick. I'm gonna stay true to my top forty list and say Sweden. Um. I'm a bit obsessed with that song. And you, uh-huh. Jordan? Um, it was, but I was thinking Sweden too, but then I thought that's too easy. So I'm going to go with Norway because uh. it's so fun. It's just such a fun time. Again, I'm recognizing the work that these two people have put in. Because if it was just a song and, you know, they never did anything else, they never made appearances, they didn't do social media, I wouldn't care. But it's the work that they put in to make it fun and exciting that I really appreciate. So, like, I look forward to seeing them come across the screen, whether it's a performance, whether it is the social media, whatever. Like, I look forward to seeing Subwoofer. And so... I'll I'll go with uh, Norway for this one to do something different. Though Sweden, obviously, also Sweden's probably higher in my top. But like, as far as like everything surrounding the song, like I don't know. I just this gets me amped up. I love them. Yeah, um, I, I agree with what you said. Like when I did my imaginary awards from my Madrid night on Saturday, um, I gave Norway two awards. The award for like the crowd loving it so much. Like the crowd loved that song more than anyone else, mm-hmm. but also I was clocking the VIP area. I don't know why I'm looking at there; they're not there. Right. Um, <laughs> um, the VIP area where the other acts were kind of there, and they all came for um, to mm. watch Subwoofer. 
Mm. Um, and when I published that video, yeah, Subwoofer made a comment. They're, they're very good on YouTube. They comment on lots of videos, right? And they, they, they commented saying, thank you very much for my imaginary awards. And I was like, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> um, okay, so favorite Balkan 2022 entry. So I need to go first now. And I had to Google this. Oh, see, this is difficult. So if I look at, at kind of what counts as a Balkan entry, there's two countries. Um, okay, so I'm going to go... I oh, see, I'm torn between Serbia and Romania. But I'm going to go with Romania because I've been digging Romania for this. Mm-hmm. Um, and even though, um, as an artist... Like, he's a big diva. Uh-huh. And he is loving Eurovision 2022. And you could see... that That's not to diss him in any way, shape, or form. But, like, he's living his fantasy. Mm-hmm. Um, for good, exactly good for him. <laughs> um, but that song is my jam. So, like, whilst I love Constructor and Serbia... And it's a it's toss-up between the two. I'm going to go with Romania. Jordan? Okay, so I gave my favorite to Serbia. So Mm -hmm. this was another like big grower for me because originally I was just very disappointed that Sarajo did not win. And I'm still disappointed. Like she was still my winner. Sarajo from Moya 3? That's right, Sarajo from Moya 3 did not win. Oh my god! It took, I'm surprised it took this long to for me to find that out. Wow! <laughs> Thank you so much, Shane. I feel You're welcome. so enlightened. Um, but yeah, I'll give it to Serbia um, because, like I said, this is a big grower for me. Initially, I was really disappointed, and again, I'm still a little disappointed because Sadio from Moya Three was my <laughs> winner. But um, after hearing about what the song is about. I've learned I've grown to appreciate it because I think a lot of why I didn't appreciate it at first was like I don't know what this is about like I don't get it and the staging it it gives clues but it doesn't like fully tell the story it just doesn't um so so what what is the song about no uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> It's about <laughs> Serbian artists not having access to the... Is it state-funded health care? Yeah. Okay! I got but that's, it! But have you, have you not found, like, Serbians go deeper? They're like, oh, it's more about blah, 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 blah. Yes, but I can't encapsulate every argument. Yeah. I just got, got to give you the general. Got to give you the general. En- encapsulate is a good word. Yeah, yeah, I love a good word. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, I would give it to Serbia because um, not only because of the meaning, but actually the more I listen to it, the song itself is super catchy as well. Um, And so when it comes on, that really strong beat that it has, Uh it'll it'll get me. It'll get me going. It'll get me going. So, yeah, I've grown to really like Serbia. Um, It probably would have been something else if someone else's vocal was a little stronger, but it's not. And I have to move on. There is something about that beat that is completely infectious. Absolutely. I'm not gonna lie. Thank you uh, so much for watching this episode. We hope you had a great time on episode two. And we definitely have more to come in episode three of the Eurovision 2022 30 Day Challenge with Jordan and Shane. So that was day 11, days 11 to 20. Um, if you haven't checked out episode one already, the link should be on this video. And stay tuned for episode three, um, which will be coming very, very shortly. Uh, Stay safe.